Next up, at WeWantPicks.com. <laughs> Next up, at UFC Jacksonville, we have Randy Brown taking on Wellington Terman. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Before I did my notes, before I did anything, I was like, boom, Randy Brown, safety parlay. We're done here. But then I dug into it a you little You called bit. me. You literally called me like last week. I think when the <laughs> odds dropped, you're like, did you see the odds for Randy Brown or something like that? You're yeah. Like, and you're like, well, I'm doing this and this. And I was thinking in the back of my head, I was like, I don't know, man. You know? Well, and I'm glad you I'm started to come around a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to break it down, but I was like. What, did you pick Wellington? No. Okay. But I explained why Randy's not in the safety parlay. But we got Randy Brown, 16-5 and five overall, 4-1 and one in his last five. He's coming off that loss to Jack Della. Madeline, he's taking on Wellington Terman, 18 and 6 overall, 2 and 3 in his last five, coming off the decision loss to Andre Petroski. And that was an interesting decision loss because Wellington Terman, a very solid grappler, right? We all knew that. He's slick on the ground. He's always looking for sweeps, looking for submissions. His striking isn't the most powerful, but he does have solid entries and he uses footwork really well. But that loss to Petrochi was interesting because he actually looked very, very good. His striking looked very good in that fight. He destroyed Petrovsky's body. And the only real issue for Wellington is that fight. He had no answer for the wrestling, which, fine, right? Andre Petrovsky is a very, very good wrestler. We know that. He's taking on Randy Brown. Randy Brown is ridiculously tall. He uses range really well. He takes advantage of that height. He's got long jabs, kicks. He keeps you at bay with those. And then when he's ready... He's going to use his speed to initiate those ex boxing exchanges. He has seven takedowns in the UFC. He doesn't go to them often, but he does have nice trips and, and uchimadas and jujitsu on the oh, mat. Like the Kama Sutra. Kind of, except it's just a wizard kick, but they call Ooh, it uchimada. There's a wizard kick in the Kama Sutra, too. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> but he's coming off that knockout. Not knockout. He was technically submitted, but the dude was dropped and then pounced on. So let's say knockout to Jack Della Maddalena. And the reason I sort of wavered, so my my initial gut reaction was Randy Brown's in a smoke well undetermined. His striking is too good, and that's the end of that. But then I looked at that last fight, and I was like, man, he was just lighting up Andre Petrosky. And Randy Brown can wrestle, but he's not going to be wanting to wrestle Wellington Terman here. So Randy Brown's still the pick. He's so long. He is going to be the much better striker. I hope for his sake he's just dancing around the outside. Right? Stay on the outside. You'll just light up Wellington Terman all day. But if you let Wellington Terman close that distance, you let him take you down, or you, you end up in sort of these clinch-type situations, Wellington Terman is training with Glover every day and Alex Pajeda every day, and we are seeing those And now Sean Strickland. And now Sean Strickland. I don't know if that's temporary or permanent. Yeah, but he's there. So, and yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing, yeah, it's got to be because him and Chris Kirsch are like best friends at that gym. But um, we're seeing the improvements from Wellington every single fight. Randy's still the pick, but I was not confident enough to throw him in the safety parlay. I was like, you know what? And it's not, in, it's not, it has nothing to do with Randy's skills. His skills are phenomenal. It's, man, Wellington does have a path if he wants it here. What do you think, Jakey Boy? Yeah, go back to the other slide real quick because I want to mention, in my mind, and I could jinx the shit out of this, in my mind, that $9,300 is the worst value in DraftKings. I don't know if you agree or disagree with me because I don't see – Randy Brown's not really a finisher anyway. And as Angel mentioned, you saw the improvements Wellington was making. If there was ever a deficiency in in the game of Wellington Terman, it was in the striking, especially the defensive striking. And against like a, a long guy like Randy Brown, the old Wellington probably is in jeopardy of getting knocked out. But you saw the improvements – and as a, a decent striker now, I just don't see Randy Brown finding that shot. And, and as you mentioned, I don't see Randy Brown shooting takedowns on a guy like Wellington Terman. So if at $9,300, if you're not seeing a finish and you're not seeing takedowns, and he's probably not even in danger of, of knocking him down, and to win this fight, Angelo broke it down perfectly. He does need to just kind of dance around and pick apart for $9,300. I don't want that, you know, in my type of lineup. But as a fight, I think that is going to be good enough for him to win the fight because Wellington is uh, he's improving the striking but it almost might be his downfall here because I think he's going to be having more success than he thinks he's having and he's going to stick with the the striking a little bit too long the rounds are going to get away from him and even if he wants to wrestle even if he wants to grapple Randy Brown is a good wrestler he's a good grappler as well and he's so long the thing I would worry about the most here 
if you're on the Wellington side, is Randy Brown gets in a situation where he is he lands a big shot or he hurts Wellington enough to where Wellington is defaulting to wrestling. And when he is not already a, a good offensive wrestler, if he is panic wrestling, I would not be surprised if you see a Randy Brown type like front choke submission on a bad shot because he will go for stuff like that. He's a long guy. He knows what he's doing. If Wellington's taking bad shots off of being hurt, you might see a finish something like that that way. But uh, I, I think that this probably goes to a decision i like randy brown to kind of point his way to a victory as angelo said in his breakdown but um i, I don't love it enough for any type of a situation on randy brown and i agree with leaving him out of the uh safety part line yeah so uh, we're on the same side here but both a little cautious and again neither one of us are being cautious because of randy's skill sets we just have a lot of respect for wellington based off that last performance and the uh, rate of improvement there, which is very, very impressive. $9,300, $6,900. Those are DraftKings Fantasy prices. If you don't know what DraftKings Fantasy is, first of all, it's a ton of fun. I, DraftKings Fantasy has legitimately improved the UFC watching experience for me because, hold on. I no, no, it. I want If If I don't know what it is, is there a place I can go to learn? There, there wasn't. Okay. So what would I, there, I, if I, I would have that. had to just kind of figure it out on my own, but if I wanted to learn quick, like say I wanted to play this week, say I did, I, I didn't really know about yeah. DraftKings, but I'm intrigued now. And I'm like, I think I might want to dabble, but I want to just a quick, nice little course. Is there somewhere you can go to get that? You could go to wewantpicks.com, right? Okay. To become a premium member, it's only $10. And if you click on more in the menu, you're going to see courses. And right there, we have a full blown course, a beginner's guide both written and video that walks you through everything you need to know, really introduces you to it all. And it's uh, in intimidation free. Just a lot of fun, super easy. And you're the narrator. I did not. What's interesting is I did not write the content, but I am the that pretty face. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-on-one -on -one with Big Ange, baby. I did not write the content. <laughs> so we, we, have, we have people much answer. smarter... Is D. <laughs> we have much smarter people writing the courses than me. I'm just the pretty face to articulate it on screen, and we have more courses coming. But in all seriousness, we do have a big the, – the number one question we get during these streams or after is, what are those DraftKings numbers? And it's always a pain to explain it. So we're like, you know what? DraftKings fantasy betting, it's becoming legal in more and more states. And there's a lot of new people here that love fights – Love just watching the show, and they're trying to learn. They're trying to figure it out, so we'll help you. So we have the courses. We're rolling them out. There's going to be new courses constantly. Right now, we started with the most asked about one, Beginner's Guide to DraftKings. The next one will be, <laughs> you sent a reminder for your Venmo. I saw your eyes look down. I knew exactly what you saw. <laughs> yeah, you still haven't, exceed, you haven't set that 100 yet. Uh, <laughs> kind of need that. I'm waiting for 10 premium members to sign up so I can cut you the check. We own picks.com. Click become a member. You unlock everything, including those courses. And there's more advanced ones coming, right? We're going to start with the beginner and work our way up. We got Chris Riley. If you don't know who Chris Riley, he was an odds maker for a sports book. He was the monkey knife fight capper, setting the lines he for monkey knife fight friend. fantasy. Chris Riley is a genuine like a, a, a Vegas guy that works in this space and sets lines with books. He worked at Tom's Best Forever. We have him writing um, the betting guides and what that all means and how to do all that. We don't pick a comp click. Come remember, for Christ's sake. Um, quick comment pin here. Somebody said Beef Wellington Terman. Okay, cool. Whatever. No problem. Uh, here we go. You mentioned food. Let's let's see where this goes. And then I'm all ears Dixon here. Cider. I tried to separate those as hard as I could. He said he's a big fan of Hell's Kitchen. Oh, well, Dixon Cider. Yep. Um, Tiffany, my wife, got us tickets to hey. UFC 290. I don't know why you fuck your lap. Got us tickets to 290. <laughs> nah, that transition was wild. Uh, got us tickets to UFC 290 for my 40th. So we'll be going there and we oh, have baby. reservations. Not reservations at Hell's Kitchen, but at his other... He's got like six restaurants in Vegas. At one of his other ones, and I will be ordering uh, the Beef Wellington. And if anybody else will be there at UFC 290, don't say hi. Just do your thing. And I'll do you my think thing. people are... people? No, only one person said that they saw me at 285, but you think people are going to see you and be like, oh, that thing's a while. Come on. I don't, think, I don't think you know how crowds work, right? So there's a crowd. Look at what I was fucking wearing. And then you're here, 
right? Much lower. I swear to God, when I'm walking in a crowd of people, I'm seeing over most heads. <laughs> I'm above may, average. I'm way maybe above in average. Maybe in a layover at the Singapore airport, uh-uh. but not when here. When I'm at the airport, when I'm at a, when I con- I'm constantly going to concerts. I'm constantly you, going out to you bars been and the having a shortest, good time. You would have been the shortest man at my birthday barbecue, which is why we know you didn't that's, talk. You know that's different. <laughs> you know <laughs> oh, you, Angelo only that's knows tall different. people. different. The average Angelo. height there is fucking 6'5". <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bo. It is wild how many... And then Tiffany's brother. It is brother. crazy. Like, anytime I go over to your house, everyone is a fucking giant. <laughs> Tiffany's brother's tall as hell, too. Anyway, let's go ahead. 